tell us about this new payments network. Well, it's you know pretty exciting. Uh, the goal is to replace the legacy transaction system uh, for banking with a blockchain-based system that will be much faster, more scalable, more efficient, and of course, secure. So you, of course, have a very unique view of what's happening across the web. We were speaking about Cisco's earnings results earlier, which were very positive amidst all these economic headwinds, an economic slowdown in China, general political and economic uncertainty. Are you seeing any of that reflected across spending? Uh, you know, in our business, uh, you know, we're doing very well and looking forward to a strong year ahead. Uh, you know, cybersecurity is not something that is negatively impacted by those trends. You know, every enterprise needs security solutions more than ever. And that's a good reason, you know, why our security business is growing so rapidly. So as we look ahead to 2019, we're seeing a strong year uh, for growth. And with our earnings per share, we forecast it at the midpoint of the range at 14 percent year over year in 2019. How big is the addressable market for your security products? Oh, I think it's very large. Uh, you know, today we focus on the denial of service prevention and stopping application layer attacks for consumer-facing websites. There's a much bigger market of protecting enterprises with their employees and their applications and their data from, for example, data breaches. And we've developed a new zero trust enterprise security architecture that we're bringing to market. And we, we think the potential market for that is even bigger than what we're already doing with denial of service prevention and application layer protection. Does Akamai have any business in China? And if so, will it be impacted by the trade issues? Uh, we do have business in China, both from non-Chinese companies delivering content into China and also for Chinese companies that want to deliver content outside of China. And uh, that business has been growing rapidly. Uh, you know, so far there hasn't been a, a major impact, you know, with some of the, the challenges in the region. And we have excellent relationships with major Chinese companies and carriers. Uh, so I think we're in a, a good position there. There seems to be growing tension between consumers who want to trust their tech companies and the products that they use and the business models of these tech companies trying to squeeze as much out value out of the data as possible. Do you think there's a fundamental disconnect emerging? Well, this is certainly a challenging area. Uh, and it's an area that we're working on from the perspective of keeping user data private and making sure that it's only used uh, in the ways that users want it to be used and respecting the laws that are being you know, put into effect in several countries around the world. You know, the uh, general data privacy regulations. So we actually help our customers respect those regulations by making sure the data stays where it's supposed to and is only used in ways that it's supposed to be used. Do you think GDPR is working? I think it's very early days and it's a very complicated set of regulations. Uh, and I think it reflects the, in, the inherent tension between, you, you know, having your data used in good ways, but not in ways that you, you can't control that aren't so good. And it's, it's hard uh, to, to legislate that.